Good evening, everyone, and welcome again to this Bible study as we look into the Word uh, one more time to see what He has to tell us today. And today we're going to be picking up again in Psalm chapter 119. This time we're going to be picking up at the verse 105. And see what the Lord has to tell us today through His Word. And I already know it's going to be great. So it's worthy of looking into. It's been Psalms to David, 119th chapter, King James Version Bible. Our most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, again we come to you to thank you one more time for another opportunity to sit down and get in your word just a few minutes, see what you have to tell us today. And I pray, O oh Lord, that you will anoint these lips of clay and give us wisdom to speak your word with understanding that we all learn something from you. I said all, that includes myself, Lord, because I, I need to step up closer also. And Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, you touch every heart, every listener of this video Fill our heart with joy, with your love and your Holy Spirit. And let us know, Lord, that we are secure in your hands. And give us a greater hunger for your word and for your commandments. And to follow you. And Lord, if we can't follow you in your word, your commandments, what are we going to do? And I, I pray and ask your mercy to show us, Lord, that we are in your hands. And we are secure. I have no power in this earth can take us away out of your hands, and that is a promise, Lord, and I, no man can pluck us out of the Father's hands, and Lord, again, I ask you to give us knowledge and understanding, help us draw us closer to you, and we won't forget to give you the praise for it all, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and amen, and thank you, Father, one more time for your love and your mercy. Now, there's so much in this, this is why I'm trying to go through this whole chapter with the Lord's help, following His direction of leadership of the Holy Spirit. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, He has led me to this scripture to continue this scripture. Therefore, I'm satisfied, I'm content with my Lord and my Savior, and I'm happy in Him. And I know His word will not return void to who He sent it. Psalms 119, verse 105, and it reads, The word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. I have sworn, and I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgments. In other words, when he said, I have sworn, that meant he had made the vow, and he would keep it. How many times have we broken the vow and the Lord still loves us? How many times have we broken the vow that God forgave us and we're still one of His own? We're still saved. We're still in His hands, secure. But how many have thanked Him for that? 107, I am afflicted very much quicken me in other words make him alive O lord according to unto thy word he was abasing himself wholly upon god's word he was trusted god's word therefore if we trust god's word we are trusting god because he is the living word uh, you may hear me say that many times huh? but that's all right for because I know that He is the living Word from the beginning to the end. And my friend, that's what we got to build our hopes and life upon as we get saved by grace of God that we follow His Word and be obedient to what He tells us to do, which are His commandments to listen to His Word and keep His commandments. One oh eight, except I beseech thee and free will offerings 
off my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgment. Amen. He was saying here, I will deliver your gospel. I will deliver your word without charge. My friend today, a too many wants to be paid for sharing the gospel. My friend, if they love them, they will help them without them asking. I'm not a beggar. I don't beg for the money, my friend. I know the Lord has blessed me. He'll continue to bless me still, and he's going to make a way where there seemeth no way, my friend. Therefore, I do not charge for the gospel. And while I, while I talk about the gospel, I just try to lead lost souls to the Lord Jesus Christ and bring back those that are strayed. I'm trying to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the lost and the dying world because I love him. I love God. I love the Lord. And I want to be obedient to him because it was the Lord that Jesus had saved me. It was not man that saved me. But I've heard some good messages, but it still took the Lord Jesus Christ to save me. And I know that. And I will stand up on it. And I'll stand on his word until I can stand no longer. My friends, I'm not perfect by many miles, uh, but I I love the Lord. I know He is my Savior. I know He's my great Redeemer. And I know I need to follow His Word to the best of my ability. That's what I'm trying to do with the grace and help of Almighty God, the one that pours out His blessings upon us and fills us with His Holy Spirit to guide and lead us along through this life. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. In other words, he said the... Now let me read. My soul is continually in my hand. He had the right to choose a good or choose a bad. But my friend, he chose a good. He chose the Lord's word. He, he's just telling an example to us. We, if we want to live for the Lord, we got to choose the good. We got to choose his word and say no to the world and the world's ideals the world's pleasures and things that draw and pull us away from God and that would rob us of his blessings that he has for us. How many times in our life how can we recall, many of them we can't recall, how many of us traded blessings of God to the pleasures of the world. My friend, it's something to think about, although we can't count them, it's something to think about. How many times has he blessed us? And we still wanted to hang on to the world. He blessed us to keeping us here, keeping us alive, and still loving us, and trying to draw us closer to Him through and by His love, and giving us this word that we can read and go by, and to learn more of Him, or His commandments that we could follow Him. One hundred and ten. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precept, even though they had laid a trap for him, laid snares for him, that he yet held on to God's word. My friend, they going to be many snares and traps set for us along the way by Satan and by Satan followers, but we don't have to follow them. Let's hang on to the word of God. Let's hang on to the Lord Jesus Christ and his precious promises because we've been saved by grace and that blood has been applied. He washed away our sins as, as far as the east is from the west from us. Therefore let us strive to live for him and please him. Let's be a sharing this gospel to whoever we can, to the lost and dying world. I don't have to be a judge. I judge no one, but the Lord Jesus Christ would judge on that great judgment day. And his word also, as his word, it his word, it judges. Therefore, many don't like it because it will remind them that they need to lay off the world and follow him. Him. They need to take hold of him and let loose, let go of the world and the world pleasure. Because the world pleasures are taking people down and a lot farther than they want to go. Many it's going to take so far, they'll never get back. 
Hittites took them so far they would never be saved because they reject the Son of God. They reject His Word. They reject God. And if we reject one Word, we are rejecting God and His Son because I said again uh, before, I said again, we're rejecting God. We reject the Word. We're rejecting God because He is the living Word. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Do we rejoice in the word when we sit down at home in our own place, in our home where we read, read silently, and let the Lord speak to us to the word. Do we rejoice in the word? Do we rejoice in the heart because he is speaking to us through the word and we can hear what he says to our heart, my friends, and that bidding, that bidding request. He wants us to come closer to him and live more for him and let go of the things that would destroy and pull us down. My friend, does it fill you with joy? Does it fill your heart with joy to know we have that kind of Savior to forgive us of our sins and still call us His own. I have inclined mine heart to perform thy statutes always even unto the end. He declared in his heart to follow God's word unto the end. He would say until the Lord uh, uh, called me home. Uh, do we have the same determination today to follow God's word until he called us home? Uh, but let me tell you also, my friend, uh, we got to see ourselves as we are. We got to see ourselves uh, always in a need uh, of the help of the Savior, always needing help from him and needing to cry out to him and asking him to continue to show us the way and to lead us on as we press on towards the marker and prize the high calling of God in Christ Jesus because we cannot make it alone without him leading and guiding us and he also said my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow therefore if we don't follow God's word then we'll follow the stranger my friend let's follow God's word Let's study it. Let's apply it to our heart and examine ourselves and see how close we're walking to the Word, to the Lord, through the Word, and see where we need to step up a little bit closer to Him. And pray one more time more. Ask Him to forgive us all through the day for our sins, our secret sins, those we don't know about or can't remember, which become secret because we've forgotten them. But He knows everyone, my friend. Let's be sure that our name is recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. Let's be sure we ask Him to forgive us because so they will be not remembered no more against us. One thirteen. Have vain I have vain thoughts, but the law do I love vain thoughts. In other words, we all have vain thoughts. We think of things we should not think about, but God will forgive us. When we realize we have thinking these vain thoughts, we ask God to forgive us for every vain thought, every idle word that's spoken, every word that's not spoken to uplift Him, uplift the kingdom of God, and share, sharing the gospel. We ask Him to forgive us for that. That's another reason we need to ask God's forgiveness very often, every day, and especially every night before we go to sleep. We need to pray and ask God's forgiveness. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Yes, there is a hiding place in God that Satan cannot reach us, cannot get, get to us, but that hiding place is in Jesus Christ and underneath that blood that he shed on Calvary's cross. My friend, Satan cannot cross that blood line because he cannot stand that blood, my friend, because he knows that blood is a cleansing 
for every soul that come to the Lord to be saved. That blood will clean him and wash away all his sins. My friend, and the devil knows that, therefore he can't cross that bloodline. One fifteen, depart from me, ye evil doers, for I will keep thy commandments of the commandments of my God. He told the old people that tried to take him away, tried to lead him astray. He told them. Now I'm going to read this again. I want to get realize what he told them. Depart from me, ye evil doers, for I will keep. The commandments of my God. Uphold me according unto thy word that I may live, and let me be not ashamed of my hope. Every word he prayed to God, he also followed it with praise to God. My friend, is he's showing us an awful good example right here how we can pray and talk to God, and he will hear us, my friend. Because, now let me go on. Hold thou me up, and I shall be safe, and I will have respect unto thy statutes. Continually, he asked, he asked the Lord here to hold him up, and I shall be safe. But now, this is what he said, that I may let And I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. That not once in a while, but that is all the time. Every day, every hour of the day, we'll have respect unto his word. My friend, today, how many really expect his word? Now also, want to ask you another thing. I've been, I've been shut down at so many doors. A church has been closed today. But how many other pastors have called up some of the members, those loved ones, those that are disabled, those that need, ask them if they needed anything. I ain't saying this to put down anyone. I'm wanting us to think about what we should be doing in the Lord Jesus Christ if we're saved, if we love Him, if we are sharing the gospel like we should according to God's word, according to God's direction. Hold thou me up, and I will, I shall be safe, and I will have respect unto thy statute continually. Thou hast trodden down all them that erred from my statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. Now let me read this again also. Thou hast trodden down all them that erred from thy statue, my friend, he knows how to bring down those that will not follow his word, those that will not be obedient to him, he knows how to bring them down back to the ground, he knows how to bring the proud and the high looks back down to the ground where they started from, there's no animal, there's no bird that they don't fly so high in the sky. He don't come back to the ground. There's no animal climbs so high in the tree that he don't come back down to the ground. My friends, that's an example to show us we can't go so high that the Lord cannot bring us down. A lot of times when we come down, that landing ain't going to be as good as it was when we started to climb. One nineteen, thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love thy testimonies. He is saying, David was saying here, thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. In other words, he would do away with them. He would put them in their place where they could not bother the saints of God anymore. Therefore, I love thy testimonies. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, 
and I am afraid of thy judgment. My friend today, are we appearing God, what he could do for us, giving reference to him, what he can do to his soul and body, that he can catch soul and body in hell. My friends, are we uh, thinking about that today, my friend? But he said, for their deceit is falsehood. What they're doing to lead God's people astray is falsehood. False teaching, my friend. They call somebody to believe a lie, my friend. Believe it's good when it's wrong. Believe it's right when it's bad. My friend, be careful. Let us be careful to what we hear, what we go after. Let's be sure we are going after, we listen to, and hang on to the words of God that he has written for us, for our learning, that we can grow closer to him and be blessed in this life, that he can be a blessing to our hearts and lives as we live and take us home to glory one day after a while when this life is over. My friend, one day this life is going to be over. Whether we like it or not, it's going to be over. Whether we're ready to go and live with him or not, he's going to call our name. He's going to call our number, and we'll have to go to meet those deeds we have done in a body, whether it's been good or bad. We're going to give an account for it on the great judgment day. That's why David said, He feared, I am afraid of thy judgment, God's judgment, because he knew they would be right no matter how hard they hurt. He would still be right, and it would be forever, as he said. I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to mine oppressors. In other words, take care of me through the oppressors that oppress me, that do these bad, evil things against me. Are we praying for the same thing? My friend, people are trying to press us down, trying to tear us away, trying to rob us of our blessings that God has for us and to make us doubt our salvation. Let's never doubt our salvation, but hold on to the unchanging hand of God that has sealed us until the day of redemption. By his stripes we are healed, and by his blood we are sealed. And when he seals us, my friend, we're kept until the day of redemption. Let's give him some praise and honor and glory. And never be ashamed, as I've said it before, to lift your hands to him. Because lifting your hands, the Lord watch heaven is said, Lord, I surrender all my heart to you. You guide me. You direct my path. Help me follow and keep your commandments. Help me follow and listen to your words that we may know how to live and please the Lord. That's what lifting the hands means. Not only is it giving him glory and praise, we're rendering ourselves to him or yielding ourselves to him, whichever way you want to say it. One twenty two, be surety for thy servant, for good. Let not the proud oppress me. He's a praying as well all the time, also giving God the praise and praying to God to help him. How often do we ask God to help us? Just when we get in trouble, just when the storms are over our head, my friends, I need him just as much when the sun's shining bright and clear as I do in the middle of a storm. Because, my friends, the storms of life are raging all around us. The storms, the battlefield, or the mind is after us every day, continually. The devil trying to put things in our mind that would rob us of our blessings. Get our mind off of God, off of the Lord, off of his word, off of the old path, the path we need to be walking on. And that's the pathway that's straight. The Lord Jesus Christ is that pathway. One twenty three. Mine eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. 
His eyes failed because he was looking for something great. My friend, he was looking for the coming of the Savior, but he didn't get to see it, but yet he looked for it. He knew it would come. My friend, he's also going to come again to claim his children, to claim his church and take them home to be with him forever. The bride, which is the born again individual. It's not the building, but it's the those who have been saved by grace and ready to go home in the morning when he calls their name or when he comes back to gather his own, his church, and take them away. One twenty four deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy and teach me thy statute. He's asking for mercy and asking the Lord to teach him his statute, teach him the ways he wants him to go, teach him the word that he'll understand that Jesus is number one and first of all. Who's our number one? Who is our first of all? It's not, not the spouse. It's not the husband. It's not the wife. But it's God is the one. It's the head over all. And he's the one we need to be number one and foremost in our lives. And everything else will fall into place, my friend. For the Lord knows how to take care of it, and he will. 125. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. 126. I won't go much farther in this chapter at this time because there's too much in it to gain. There's too much in it to see, to take to our heart. And I want us to get what it's saying to us, to our hearts and life, that we can be happy as we live in this world amongst all the trouble and sorrow and turmoil and toil we're going through today. We can still be happy in the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that we are secure and safe in His hand, whether by life or by death, we'll still go home to be with Him when that time comes. And my friend, that is joy and peace while we live on this earth. 126, it is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. Yes, they all have. They're still make, trying to make void God's law and trying to change the word, make it sound good sound something else different than what they read because they want it to sound easy to tickle in yours. My friend, ears, my friend, my friend, listen to God's word. It's a strong word that we need, not sugar-coated, but as God spoke it to his prophets of old, as he spoke here to David and had him to write for our learning, for our good, and for our benefit to make us have a desire and have a longing to be with him and not to live after the world and all the ungodly things that are in the world. 127. Therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. It's time, my friends, that we ourselves started hating every false way. I know some say you're not to hate anything, but we are to hate sin, and sin is a false way. My friends, the more we hate sin and the false ways, the more we're going to try to stay from it. I'm not a saying, my friends, that we don't come in contact with things about our daily lives, going to the store, shopping for the things we need, to the doctor's office for medical attention. We see many things, but we don't have to go along with it. We can let our light shine. If anybody says anything to us, in any way, let them know that we trust in the true and the living God. We put our, all our faith in Him, and He is the one we want to follow. And we don't follow man, but follow God in His Word, and be obedient to Him, because it's the Lord Jesus Christ that saved us. 
that him is going to take us home one day when we leave this world because we are in his hands. We are his children. And like I've already say, stated and said, we are sealed until the day of redemption. My friends, let us strive to please him. If we please him, everything else will be taken care of. And to please in him, we'll be sharing this gospel to whoever we can and to the lost and dying world, even if it makes them, their, us, them our enemies. And my friend, many, it will. But God is greater than all enemies because he's our Savior, our Redeemer, and he will take us home one day, lead us by the hand, and lead us to that great, great promised land in the portals of glory where we can dwell in his presence forevermore. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's again we come to you, Lord, with thankful heart. To thank you again for the scripture you led us back to today and for every word you have given us. And I pray, O Lord, your word would not return void. You've already said it wouldn't. And I pray, O Lord, you anoint your word once again, that it would touch every heart that listen to this video today. And Lord, help us all be stronger in you. Help us rejoice that our name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Help us to understand that your blood has never lost its power, and it never will. It is as pure and clean and strong today as it was when that first drop came from your body. My friend, my Lord, today, I pray you help every one of us grow closer to you and be looking more diligently for your coming. Because one day, Lord, you are going to come back and you're going to claim your own. If you don't come to claim your own, Lord, you'll call us on home to be with you. So whichever way we go, by the grave or you come for us, then we'll still be safe in your hands. Now, Lord, I pray for those that don't know you today as their Savior, Lord, I pray. You reach down today and send out your drawing spirit to them one more time. Because, Lord, we don't want no one to leave this world without the opportunity of being saved and knowing you that are their Savior, that they are redeemed. And, Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, today for those that are sick and afflicted in body, you reach down, heal, deliver, touch, and set free. It be your will. And I pray, O oh Lord, you take this fire that's going around. I pray you stop it and cleanse it. And Lord, and those that sick with it, I pray you let it go away and show the doctors a miracle they can't figure out, but that it is you, Lord, that performed that miracle. And we know you're able. You're always performing miracles, even us to being saved and still walking around, Lord. It's a great miracle. And Lord, I pray you show it again to these hospitals, these doctors, these nurses that are working around the clock to protect the sick and help them. But Lord, you're the great physician you're the one can heal all things you have power over all diseases all over sickness all viruses no matter what it is you have power over it lord and we lay them in your hands we lay this sickness in your hands this virus in your hands and you we pray you'll cast it away and stop it where it is and all over the world, not just our country, but over the whole world, that the whole world can see your hands, that you are a just and true God, and you do heal, deliver, and you do set free. Lord, if it's not your will for those that are sick and afflicted in body, to heal their body, Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, you let their testimony be a witness to those that's lost, that they can see, they can yet have faith and continue in you and believe in you and rejoice in you, knowing they are saved and ready to go home in the morning to that great homecoming day. And Lord, when you get through with us, Lord, in this life, we can hear you say, my friend, welcome home, my good and faithful servant, to the joys of the Lord. Your work on the earth is done. Now you can come and live with me. You can stay with me in my kingdom forever, and no harm will ever come to you again. You'll never suffer no more. You'll never die no more, but forever be in my presence and with the holy angels then lord when we get there we can bow our head and step aside and give you praise lord we're not able to give the day and i also pray lord that you'll save someone today save someone tonight before they sleep and lord when we get there to be with you then we can join all the angels around that angel band i sing it around the throne giving you praise and glory for it all and we can sing the old story how we were saved 
saved and redeemed by grace, uh, and how you saved us uh, from our sins, uh, how you paid that sin debt in full uh, on the old rugged cross, uh, that sin debt we owed and could not pay, uh, but you paid it all that a sinner like us could go free, can have our eternal life in heaven with you one day after a while. These things we ask in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and amen. And thank you, Father, one more time for your love and your mercy.